Hello and welcome to our weekly credit chat that we host every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on YouTube and on Twitter. Credit chat is a time when we get together to talk about credit and money issues that matter to all of us. You know, every week we cover a different personal finance topic and today we're talking about debt and how to get rid of it for good. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce our featured guest, Beverly Harzog. Beverly is a nationally recognized consumer credit expert who's appeared on Fox News, ABC News Now, and CNN. She's published literally all over the place. You can find her advice in Wall Street Journal, CNNMoney.com, The New York Times, USA Today, Kiplinger, and dozens of other top financial publications. She's the author of Confessions of a Credit Junkie, Everything You Need to Know to Avoid the Mistakes I Made, and also The Debt Escape Plan, which hit bookstore shelves in February. You can learn more about Beverly by going to her website at beverlyharzog.com, and you'll also find her tweeting at Beverly Harzog. As always, we have Rod Griffin joining us. He's our Director of Public Education for Experian, and he'll be tweeting at Rod underscore Griffin. My name is Mike Delgado, and I'm the Social Media Manager uh, here at Experian North America, and I'll be tweeting at Mike Delgado. And behind the scenes, who's doing it all, we have Christina Roman. She's our social media specialist for Experian North America, and she'll be tweeting at Experian underscore US. Want to let you know there's a lot of different ways for you to join us today. First, you can join us on Twitter, and right now I'm looking at the Credit Chat hashtag, and a lot of great conversations are already starting up. And if you'd like to join us, just make sure to append your tweet with the Credit Chat hashtag so that we can see it. So if you have any questions for Beverly or uh, have any comments, please. Uh, tweet out with a credit chat hashtag. If you'd like to join our special Experian tweet chat room, we have a short URL that you can go to, and it's ex.pn slash tweet chat. And so if you go to that short URL, you'll be brought into a special tweet chat room where you'll see just the credit chat conversation that's happening right now. So we invite you to uh, go to ex.pn slash tweet chat. Also, if you're watching live here on YouTube, and you would like to participate, we would love to engage with you. And you can join us in a couple different ways. One is by clicking on the little widget that's on the bottom left-hand side of your screen, and it says, be part of the conversation. If you click on that link, you'll be brought into a special YouTube app room where you can actually thumbs up parts of our conversation as well as post your comments and questions. So we invite you to, to join our Hangout. Um, we would love to see your questions for Beverly or your comments throughout this discussion. And so those are the two different ways that you can join us. So now, um, enough of this introduction. Let's get to our guest. And unfortunately, Beverly is having some trouble with the video hangout, but we have her on the phone. And so excited, Beverly, to have you with us today. How are you doing? Great, I can't wait to do I'm doing very, very good. So um, Beverly, can, tell us about your, your latest book that just hit the shelves in February, The Dead Escape Plan. Yeah, it, uh, it, it was released in February, and the reason I did this book is because questions of the credit junkie last year, I got so many emails telling me how much they love that book, but how they, they had read that before they had gotten into credit card debt. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this we really need a book out there that just focuses on credit card debt, and that's what my book focuses on. There's a lot of different types of debt, but credit card debt is particularly toxic. Uh, you know, so that means that uh, you, know, you end up paying interest expense, and the value of what you're paying interest on doesn't increase, like perhaps a mortgage or you know, if you're paying off student loans, that's kind of like, you know, some people call that a good debt because it's an investment in your future, but credit card debt is just bad news for you. So I wanted to write a book to help people get out of debt. Beverly, one of the questions that we just tweeted out is, you know, why is it so easy to fall into debt? And I'd love for you to maybe address that question and, and maybe even in terms of why is it so easy to fall into debt with credit cards? You know, it's really, it is easy to fall into debt with credit cards. And the reason is because there's an emotional disconnect. You know, you're using, you know, a little piece of plastic and you're buying something and, you know, it really almost seems like it's free. I know that was the sensation I felt years ago when I had gotten into 20 grand in credit card debt. And so there's a disconnect. It just doesn't feel like you're 
you're using real money. Uh, but then you realize, yes, I really did spend money when you get that bill at the end of the month. For some people, that's quite a shock. So that's one reason it's easy. And another reason is because, you know, a lot of people don't a budget in place or they're not tracking their spending and these are just kind of like the foundation of personal finance you know if you don't have a budget and certainly if you don't track your spend you're not going to know what you spent where so it's just easy to do that for some people just getting the structure in place is all they need for others they need to dig a little deeper and get into the root cause on their spending Beverly, I had, I'd seen a study recently that um, I think it was in Live Science that said that the people are more likely to spend more when they're using credit cards versus when they're just using cash out of their wallet. Have you found that to be true? Uh, you know, like, I think that that could be true for some people. Uh, for me, it isn't. I use my I use rewards credit card. And uh, I make a profit from my cards. Uh, but you know, if we went back several, several, you know, years, I wouldn't be able to say that. So it kind of depends on the mm. individual. If you're a person that, uh, you know, either you're not tracking your spending, or you know, you as I say, to impulse purchases, then maybe using credit cards isn't the right thing for you to do. So you know, if you're going to use rewards cards, you know, you should jump at, you know know how much you can put on that credit card and you know you've got the self-control not to overspend just to get rewards because at the end of the day if you carry a balance on that rewards card you know you're wiping out the rewards that you would earn so you know you can't get ahead that way yeah I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think it, I think it definitely is true um, that credit cards can be can be great I mean the way that you're using the Beverly to get points and get rewards is, is an awesome way because you're you're taking advantage of the credit system. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's really the way to go. And, you know, but even if you don't feel comfortable with cards, um, you know, credit cards are a good way to build uh, credit history. You know, as long as you're not there, that's, that's the key. Low balances and then paid off in full. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it, Rod. I wanted to I wanted to ask you about this because I think a lot of times there is that concept misconception about credit cards being evil. And I know yeah. you talked about this before. Can you kind of talk about your view on credit cards? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, and what I always tell people is credit and debt aren't the same thing necessarily. One can lead to the other. But if you use your credit cards well, as Beverly just said, they can be a financial tool. You can carry a credit card and not carry any debt. If you make small purchases or make purchases and have saved and use and then pay it in full, you don't have to carry a balance, but you can take advantage of the advantages it gives you. Uh, kind of redundant, but uh, for example, you know when I've taken vacations a, a couple of times and saved so that I could pay for them over several years and then used a credit card to actually purchase the air, airplane tickets and pay for the hotel because I got travel insurance and some other things that kind of protected my investment and then paid it in full as soon as I got back. So I didn't carry a balance, but was able to use that credit card as a financial tool to give me some additional protection. So you know, credit when used well is a great financial tool. When it's used poorly, it becomes a, a burden. And I, and that's where you have to kind of be careful. And I think Beverly's points are, are right on target. You know, for some people, one credit card's too many. Uh, for others, it's, they can use it well and are responsible. Yeah, I, I, here just a, a quick little personal anecdote. I dress for my daughter; she's getting married, and put it on my I will pay just. I get it, but you know, opportunity to get a lot. Not, but if I did know what I would with credit cards, I would not recommend that. So, you know, prepare. And a lot of self-discipline. You can use that. And, uh, you know, uh, like, get the credit card for everybody. I mean, and there's there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're comfortable with them. Uh, don't use credit cards. There are other ways to build credit. Mm -hmm. Beverly, we just tweeted out question two, and there's a lot of really good discussion happening on 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 during our credit chat. Um, okay. The the second question is, what are the most common types of debts? That people have. You know, that's a great question. Um, my book focuses 
on credit card debt because that's my specialty. But there were other types of debt, as yeah, of course, as well, mortgages and student loans. I consider those good debt. I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. But um, you know, as far as debt could be good, and I know that's a, <laughs> that's a controversial word for that. <laughs> but you know, when you go into debt over something that you expect to increase in value, uh, you know, sometimes that's that's a good risk. Take. Uh, a lot of people use credit cards as capital for their businesses. Uh, you know, if you feel comfortable with that and you've got a great idea and you've done your research and your homework, you know, that might be a good way to go. These are just, these are situations uh, and decisions that people have to make, you know, dependent on their the specifics, um, you know, their current situation, what's their financial situation at the moment, for instance. Uh, so there, you know, there are a lot of different types of debt. Uh, auto loans, I don't consider that a good debt because, you know, as soon as you drive the car off the lot, it's decreased in value so mm. much. And I'll tell you, in my family, we never buy new cars. I mean, for us, getting a, a, a nice used car that's seven years old, that's a new car for us. <laughs> so we, you know, we decided that we're not willing to spend money on that. Cars important to you, I understand that that's fine, but I to know that's, you know, to me, that's not a good debt to get into. Rod, um, as you speak at different sessions and advise people on credit, and people come to you with uh, different credit issues, what are some of the common debts that people have shared with you that they have? Yeah, I think we kind of hit the same common ones. It's uh, credit card debt, obviously, is right at the top of the mountain. Uh, student loans a lot lately. I uh, actually came up in a session I did this morning. Student loans are a big concern. Auto loans, mortgages, you know, and how do you manage a mortgage? Did you get into too much house or buy a house at the wrong time? Uh, and, and how do you uh, manage that and manage the payments? So kind of those are the, the things I hear most about. Um, you know, I was, like Beverly said, I think there are quote good debt and bad debt. Um, and I think all of them can be good debt if you have a plan to uh, manage that debt and repay the debt uh, and understand what you have to give up. The other thing I always tell people is if you're going to use credit to make a purchase, you have to expect to give something else up because that's what credit's about. It's a trade off. You're going to get something now that you would, so you have to pay that off before you get whatever other thing you might have wanted. So be prepared to give something up, at least for the time being, until you you pay that debt, especially if it's like Beverly said, I'm kind of a new car guy. <laughs> so I do the car loan, but I drive the car until it dies. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's one of those, I have a car loan, but I usually pay it off early too, because we, you know, it's one of those, I know what the loan is. I plan for it, save, and then pay off the loan early and then drive the car for a number of years without the debt and then get a new car. So it's, you know, you're right though, in terms of it being a good, good uh, debt. It's not, and I know it, and it's just something that I, you know, I live with <laughs> and plan for. But, you know, it's yeah. things like mortgages and student loans. They're an investment in your future in a lot of ways if you plan well for them. And why'd you make a really good point about the, uh, the car loans? And um, I do think that it's important uh, to decide, you know, what you want to spend your money on. And I have a lot of friends that they enjoy their cars. They spend their money on that. I choose not to spend my money on cars because I choose to spend my money on travel. Hmm. So it's yep. if you have a budget like you're spending, you can make a, a conscious choice about what you spend your money on. And that, that's a great place to be, to make your choices about how you spend your money. Yeah. Beverly, Rod brought up something about good versus bad debt. Can you talk a little bit about the differences between those two? Um, yeah, I think I've got I'm talking about that too. Um, you know, in, in debt, like student loan, um, for instance, that's a, a you know really a topical right now, and yeah. you know a lot of it's in the news, and so many people are in debt. Um, I think it's a good debt, though, as long as you don't go overboard. Uh, you know, I've heard that a good guideline is you should have more debt than the salary you can make in your first year when you get out of college. And I think that's a pretty good guideline. It's a good investment as long as you don't have unrealis unrealistic expectations. Let's say you go to a very expensive school um, and you're, you know, hundred grand in debt, but you're really not going 
he talks about to get into or close to that when you get out of college. I mean, depending on what you uh, major in, of course. So as long as you match up what you want to major in and think very carefully about how much money you can make in that first year, I do think that um, you know, student loan debt uh, is one of the good ones. It's an investment in your future. I think mortgages are a good debt if you've made a good a choice. You know, and you know that's even a little controversial. I mean, you know, what uh, five to seven years ago, real estate prices I started dropping. Uh, so real estate is certainly a risk. But if you make a, a you know a well thought out decision, that can be you know considered a good debt. We talked about car loans already, uh, credit card debt. That's just toxic. I really think that's mm -hmm. uh, probably the worst one uh, because you're paying so much more than what you intended to pay. But the value isn't going up. It's going to stay the same. Actually, appreciate in in many many cases. So, you know, that's the difference I see in good and bad debt. Getting good debt and paying the bill responsibly, not missing any payments. You know, that really can help build your credit history, which opens up a lot of opportunities for you, as well as help you save money on things like life insurance, health insurance, and car insurance. Beverly, uh, we just tweeted out question number three, which is, what are some common mistakes that keep us in debt? And, and I'm curious about mistakes people make when dealing with, you know, massive credit card debt. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I think mistakes, I know we don't have time for all night. Important. It's something I call head and sand syndrome, okay? I had this for years. I just kept spending. Uh, this is when you just kind of pretend that debt isn't there because it's too painful and too you know, emotionally draining to take a look at it and do something about it. Well, I like you call it debt uh, head in the sand. Excuse me? I, I like that, that phrase, yeah, head in the sand. Yeah, head in the sand syndrome. So you have to look at it own it. And only then can you move forward and take positive action to get yourself out of debt. So once you pay attention, you could go forward. So that's a really big one because while you're doing this, while you're acting like it's not there, account interest is uh, really building. You're going to end up with a much bigger debt than you ever you know, ever thought you'd ever have. So uh, to me, that's a real big one. And another one I like to focus on a lot is Never pay more than the minimum payment uh, when you have credit card debt. It's very difficult to get out of debt when that's all you're doing. Uh, if you've got a fairly large balance, my goodness, it's going to take you forever to get out of debt at that rate. So, you know, do what you can to pay more than that minimum payment because you're going to pay it down, you know, so much faster. And once you get going, you're going to feel that adrenaline rush and you'll keep going. Mm. So focus on that. It's real important. Beverly, what do you suggest for somebody who is, you know, has a lot of debt in credit cards and their their terms of their credit card are changing and it's making it more difficult for them to pay down the debt? You know, that can certainly happen. And sometimes if the credit card issue receives your score, they might even lower your credit limit, which is your credit worse. <laughs> it can just be yeah. a bad situation all around. Yeah. If you look like this thing, your credit card issue and talk to them. If you're in a situation where you can barely pay bills and, and the reason why uh, you're, you know, almost maxing out your cards, ask to speak to the hardship department. I have a lot of readers that have done this and had success straight or they were for a few months like a track. So don't just sit there, do something, be very proactive. Uh, and, you know, think about what you're going to say to the credit card issuer before you call the right full script, few little points. You know, like you're very together. About a good employed or uh, it's valuable is medical debt. That, that's one of the, you know, uh, biggest factors that leads to bankruptcy. So if you've got something, you know, a crisis that's happened to you, talk about that with the credit card issuer and just see what see if they can work with you about this. Beverly, for those that are, you know, maybe have some really, uh, maybe have some credit cards that are not really helping them because the interest rates are maybe really, really high. Uh, what do you suggest as far as for them when they're when they're looking for a new credit card? Um, what are some things that they should look for? Okay, well, and they, they will 
so happy. Uh, Beverly, are you there? Uh, they can get the bottom balance, uh, you know, keep the old card for now, okay, but transfer that balance to a new card, um, and you'll have a period of time where you can pay it off without paying interest. Uh, so, I mean, but you have to have the excellent credit to qualify for the best offers, mm. but, but that's one way, one way you can kind of kind of get ahead of the curve a little bit. And I wouldn't close that old card unless you're too tempted to spend. And another rule is do the balance transfer. Do not put new purchases on your card. That is a no-no. Mm. In fact, stop spending. If you're in credit card debt, do not use your credit cards unless you're doing something like this where you're transferring your balance so you can pay it off more easily. Rod, I wanted to ask you, um, what should people know about debt and how it impacts their credit scores? Rod, can you hear me okay? Yeah, my turn for technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to unmute because I was typing too. Um, I couldn't hit them. My cursor disappeared. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, you know, the, the thing I... Just repeat the question for me again. I just sure, went sure. completely brain dead. Yeah, so um, you're talking about debt and credit card debt, and just curious about what should people know about how debt affects their yeah. credit? Well, and credit card debt is one of the, the, the most important factors in credit scores. So you're looking at what we call revolving accounts, which is just a, a fancy term for credit cards, and utilization, in other words, the balances you have as compared to your credit limits is the second most important factor to credit scores. And it accounts for something in excess of 30% of the score. So if you have high balances, it's going to hurt your credit scores. Uh, we just did a little survey uh, during financial literacy month. And one of the things we found was that people with the poorest vantage scores on average had a 99% utilization rate on their mm -hmm. credit cards. I mean, they were maxing out their cards. When you yeah. look at the people with the best scores, their utilization rate was only about 8%. So having high balances is a very detrimental thing to do, especially whether it's one card or all of them, but especially if it's more than one card. Um, you know, carrying too much debt is a sign of risk. You'll have a hard time managing it, making payments. It's going to hurt your credit and hurt your credit scores. Beverly, um, we just tweeted out question number five, which is how can creating creating a budget help with tackling credit card debt? And um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Beverly. Yeah, um, yeah, I get really excited about this topic. <laughs> All right, once you get a budget in place, you'll be able to attack your debt. You need to know where your money is going, how much income you have coming in, how much, what are your expenses every month. Uh, so on my website, actually, if they're pretty you know, what, I, what you need to do. Expense. I mean, don't take anything for granted. Don't say, "Okay, well, no, I can't. I can't change this." No, maybe you can. So, <laughs> just you know, you got to think outside the box a little. Look at every single expense and see if you can decrease that expense. You know, it a lot of times people will freak out when I say something like this and say, "Oh, you know, I can't give up my cable." You know, I got to watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to tell you you have to give up anything you don't want to. If it's that important to you. But you have to cut expenses somewhere and then apply the extra money to that minimum payment so that you can start getting out of debt. Uh, I, I just can't tell how important that is. You know, I, you know, my philosophy, and we touched on this with the car, you know, the car loans a little bit, is that if something is important to you, it's modeled to your happiness, that's why I keep it. I'm, um, I am a... I love lattes. I'm not giving up my latte. <laughs> right. Okay. I never did, in fact, uh, even when I was in debt. But I cut expenses elsewhere. Uh, I, I, 
joined a local gym, a local, you know, uh, gym and cut my expenses that way instead of going to a health club. I stopped going to movies, payment budget. So decide what's important to you. And that's why looking at each line item is important mm. too. Decide where you want to where you can't, or maybe you could just decrease somewhere. So this is how a budget will help you get out of debt. Um, and once you do that and you start tracking your spending, and there are three ways to do this, you know, with smartphone apps or even online, uh, you'll be able to stay on that budget and you'll be able to uh, apply extra money to that minimum payment. Uh, I'll say I use Mint, and I'm not being paid to say that. I have no comment or <laughs> but I love Mint. I've been using it for a very long time. My kids became teenagers and got on it, so they could learn how to manage That's money. Great. So you know, it, it just depends on too the, the choice you make. You know, for the type of budgeting you want to budget your software you want to use, and you can do your own too if you're, you know, if you're a high tech kind of person, not me, but somebody, somebody out there probably is. Um, you know, you kind of you want to be sure you pick something that you relate to that that works with your money personality. And I have a quiz in my book to help you figure that out. Um, you, know, you relate to the world. I'm a visual person, so that's why I like that. Nice colors. So, you know, uh, do a little research online and pick out something. That Remember, I love that you share those different methods and, uh, you know, just starting now, just starting to track spending um, mm -hmm. in a way that works for you, whether it's through an app like Mint, uh, which is a wonderful app, I totally agree, um, or yeah. just simply getting down with a pencil and a piece of paper and starting to jot down how you're spending your money. And I have some friends, Beverly, who for them, credit cards was a, was a problem. So they decided that they were just going to put money into envelopes and mm -hmm. you know, use, the, yeah, use the envelope <laughs> system. And so be able to track their spending. And so I think, I think I, I really like your approach to just get started. It doesn't really matter which way you go, just start tracking your right. expenses, right? Yeah. Start. <laughs> and you can make decisions, you know, you can change your decisions. It's, you know, nothing's, you know, written in stone here. You know, you can, if something's not working for you, you can change it. You know, the whole point is to be successful and you might have to try a few different things to figure out the best path for yourself. Rod, I was going to ask you, do you uh, have a recommendation for people when they're looking at a budget? Um, in terms of, of like where to start or, yeah, or like where to start? Um, no, I think, you know, I, I'll say mint too. I, you know, I think that's something and I've, you know, referred family to it as well. So, um, you know, I think whether you call it a budget or a spending plan or, you know, whatever you want to call it, I think you need to write it down somehow uh, and record what you spend. Uh, and, you know, I, I think what I find is I talk to people and quite often, um, barring situations where you've had a health issue or job loss, that kind of thing, if it's just a spending issue, people actually have, you know, often have more money than they realize uh, and it, they just don't understand where it's going and, and are able to really make a difference just because you've written down and, and really um, made concrete how you're spending the money that you do have coming in. So, um, you know, I think it's it's like Beverly said and, and like like you said, when it comes to paying off debts, you know, you hear about, you hear people say, should I pay off the highest interest first or the lowest balance? And I tell people, pick one and start, whatever works for you. You know, if it's the lowest balance because you get it knocked out and it, it keeps you focused and going forward, great. Uh, if, you know, if you try to pay off the highest interest or the highest balance and you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, you'll give up and then you've defeated the purpose. So, um, you know, do what works for you. Um, find tools if you're, if you're into, you know, technology. Use apps. You find one that works for you. If you're into Excel, do a spreadsheet. Um, Use a pencil and paper if you're really old fashioned, but it's just a matter of getting started, writing down, tracking what you spend, knowing where your money goes so that you can can then focus on paying off the debt you have. Beverly, do you have suggestions uh, for, for those who are maybe just starting this process and needing some motivation? How do you stay motivated? Because sometimes when you're creating a budget for the first time, it can seem very, very restrictive and you just pointed out, like having the lattes, you need the lattes, so make room in your budget. So you, that's one way to stay motivated. 
Um, but what, what, what are some ways that people can stay motivated or on track and not um, making it too restrictive of a budget? Yeah, you know, it, unfortunately, you know, there, there is a negative uh, feeling about budgets. Um, but, you know, I, I just I like to point out that budget will give you freedom. It is not going to constrict you. It's actually going to give you the freedom to take back your life. So, first of all, let's kind of look at it that way if you can. And I know it's difficult, okay? Yeah. You know, when I got into debt, no budget, okay? That, that was one of my biggest problems. But once you get going, you know, really things will start to fall into place. Now, in terms of staying motivated, um, you know, I want people to think very carefully about this. In fact, I have a whole chapter in my book, The Dead Escape Plan, just on how to stay motivated while you go through this, because I think that's one of the most important things. If you don't stay motivated, you're not going to succeed. Uh, you know, so it, there, there, there are a lot of things you can do, and part of this comes back to your money personality. You know, if you're a person that would like some support, some emotional support, would like a debt buddy, okay? Or if you, if you would like to talk to a lot of people who are in debt, um, you know, and exchange ideas for, uh, you know, helping each other, there are lots of forums online. Uh, a lot of people talk about this on, on my website. Uh, there are a lot of ways that you can connect with other people you know now if you're a person that you know maybe you don't you know you don't want to discuss these types of issues with other people and I respect that you know I was kind of like that when I was in debt um, you know this happened to me before the internet and I didn't really have all these options but I was you know I used to be pretty private stuff uh, you know there are other things you can do uh, cut out pictures of if you want to go goals are, okay, whether you wanted to travel or, you know, maybe you've got kids, you want to start saving for college, all these kinds of things motivate you, but only you know what, what's going to be the most motivating, you know, and if all else fails, and get yourself a theme song and play that when you're feeling down. Yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. Um, Beverly, I love, I love all the suggestions. I love the, the kind of the suggestion of having like a kind of a dream board uh, to kind of help you visualize and help you help you be focused on what you're actually aiming for. Yeah. You know, that's what I did. I, um, you know, like I said, this was before the internet when it happened to me, and I had poster boards. I had all kind of, uh, now, uh, use Pinterest. Pinterest is great for this kind of thing. In fact, I have a board. I want to go to Italy, and I have a Pinterest board about going to Italy. Mm. So that's what I'm saving oh. for now. So there are all kinds of ways to, you know, to, self-motivated, but long-term goals, short-term goals are great too, uh, but long-term goals, that will really help you when you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to, I can't stand it longer, I've got to go, uh, I've got to go to the beach this weekend, well, just stop yourself right there and look at your dream board, get rid of your debt, and you can, you can do whatever you want, so, you know, it really does work. That is so cool. Um, yeah. I'll go ahead, Rod? I say I love that idea, really, it's a cool idea, but, um, Thank you. Beverly, Beverly, do you recommend like short-term goals? One of the things that I often hear people say is that, you know, when we talk about a latte, if you know, if you hit a, a smaller goal, you get an extra latte for the week, something like that. Um, <laughs> you know, like that. And yeah, you know, I, oh yeah, you bring up a great point. Uh, I think it's a great idea to look at your goals every week. You know, you can watch the, the if you've got like a, uh, a bar chart of your debt, you can watch it go down every week. And when you hit, you know, 20, 25 percent of paying it off, maybe you go out with a pedicure, with a friend to get a pedicure, you know, something like that. Not something that's going to like blow your budget. You don't want to go that far. But something to reward yourself along the way. Yeah, I'm glad uh, it's so funny, Beverly, as you're talking about, you know, one of your goals is, is going to Italy. Um, it leads right into our next question, which is, you know, the pros and cons of using credit cards. And one of the big pros is actually, you know, miles, right? Yeah. Well, I left that out of my feet. <laughs> I, I use this whenever I can. I mentioned buying the wedding dress. It was not cheap. <laughs> All right, so. You paid off in the bill. your credit card that's one of the biggest pros another pro and i think rod mentioned this earlier are the consumer 
pictures you get. And that's very, very important. Um, and it's also, you know, more protection for you. If you're buying something online, you know, we've had a lot of uh, hackings over the past couple of years. It seems like there's a major hacking every other week. Uh, so if you use a credit card, um, you know, it, at least if your account gets, you know, hijacked, it's not going to be a disaster because it's not a cash account. Whereas if you use a debit card, um, you know, your account can be drained. And sure, you'll probably get that money back. You may not get all of it back, though, depending on the circumstances, but you might be without that cash for a week to 10 days. Um, and if you were living paycheck to paycheck, that could very well be a disaster for you. So, you know, if you can use credit cards and pay the bill in full every month, there are a lot of pros. Now, the cons, um, you know, you can end up in debt, you know, if you're not being careful. It's very easy, as we talked earlier, to uh, have that emotional dis to feel like you're not actually spending money on this uh, and you know and then you're shocked when you get the get the bill uh, one thing I recommend to avoid uh, you know the negative downside of the credit card is to check your accounts online um, I do it every day I know I'm a little different <laughs> I do it every day but every day is a great idea and for no other reason just to be sure that you're not a victim of fraud, that there are any fraudulent purchases on your account. Uh, but it also keeps your balance top of mind. And yeah, you should be tracking too. But you know, just seeing the number uh, in your account, that can help you rein in your spending if you yeah. have an issue with that. So yeah, there are pros and cons yeah, uh, to credit cards. And you know, a lot of people think I'm pro credit card. I am not. Totally not pro credit card. I am And if, you, uh, if you're opposed to credit cards or what? You know, if you do think they're evil, whatever reason you have, don't use credit cards. Be aware of, you know, that there are also some pros. You know, just make this, this, the decision that works for you. Beverly, in your book, you talk about the different money personalities people have, and I'm curious about how do our personalities affect the way that we're going to use credit cards? Okay, that, that's a great question, and one of the reasons I did the quiz is because, gosh, love quizzes. <laughs> Everybody loves quizzes. I think it's them really, really into the material. But it's also a great tool to help you make the right decisions for yourself. Uh, you know, one of the personalities I talk about is the money master. And this this person is somebody that can use rewards cards. They're going to travel for free. <laughs> you know, they're going to... This person might even have a spreadsheet with all their cards and rewards. Uh, but this person doesn't carry a balance. All right, so, you know, that gives you a lot of great information as to whether or not you should be using cards and how you should be using them. Um, another uh, uh, personality that I outline is called the budget buster. And if you can guess, this person, um, this person might even have a budget, but I have a hard time sticking to it, even when tracking the spending, because they kind of give in to impulse purchases. So that's an important thing to know about yourself. You shouldn't, probably shouldn't be using credit cards until you can figure out how to stay on that budget, because that person, that person ends up in credit card debt. So I was just trying to give people a little bit of insight into their relationship with money, with credit cards, how they make their decisions, um, you know, and this also kind of leads into the root issue. Why did you get into credit card debt um, and for somebody that's a budget buster well you know they're not they're not reining in their spending they're just kind of you know they're giving in to impulse purchases and um, you know not sticking to the plan so to speak and that's something that you can work on you can overcome that in many cases uh, but again if you find that you can't overcome that don't use credit cards it's really it's really that simple Beverly, before we move to our credit chat question of the week for Rod, I wanted to ask you, uh, do you have any final tips for those that are right now just struggling with debt, um, looking for a way to get out? Um, what What is just, I guess, just some last minute or is just some advice for them? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one thing that I want people to work on even while they're in debt is having an emergency fund. And don't uh, freak out if you can't put, you know, a significant amount in it. Even if you've got $25 that you can put in there to just get started. Notice a lot of my things are just getting started, yeah, yeah. okay, because you will find as you start paying down your debt, uh, you're going to feel such an adrenaline rush. That's going to keep you going. Now that debt has, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, people have a negative feeling about this, but I'm telling you, once 
Brennan, there's a positive side to this. You're going to feel great. You're going to feel like you're taking back your life. You're going to feel empowered. So my advice, keep going until you get to that point. It really doesn't take that long to get there unless you have a tremendous amount of debt, in which case I might suggest uh, you know, talking with a credit counselor to, to check out your options. But just keep going. You can do it. You can do it and you can fix your credit. Thank you, Beverly. And Beverly, where can others learn more about you and your work? I am at Beverly Harzog, that's H-A-R-Z-O-G dot com. I do credit card reviews on request. I don't have affiliate relationships with credit card issuers, so I give a, just an unbiased review on request. Um, I have a list of secured credit cards, uh, and a lot of people trying to rebuild use those, so that, that's available for free on my site as well. Thank you, Beverly. Uh, we want to encourage everyone to go to beverlyharzog.com, subscribe to her blog, and also make sure you're following her on Twitter at Beverly Harzog. Uh, we're now moving over to the Credit Check question of the week. And Rod, uh, today's question is about bankruptcy. And the question is, how long does bankruptcy stay on a credit report? And how soon after bankruptcy can you qualify for new accounts? Sure. And you know, bankruptcy is the right thing for some people. It's, it's sort of the last ditch effort when you've had problems and it, it's, you know, it, it, sometimes it's necessary. It's important to understand though, I, you know, I heard actually in uh, the session I was in today that sometimes bankruptcy is seen as the, the get out of jail free card, you know, everything's wiped away, but that's not exactly true. Uh, when you declare bankruptcy, the public record, the bankruptcy itself is going to stay on your report for up to 10 years. If it's chapter 13, it will stay for seven years from the filing date. If it's chapter seven, it will stay for 10 years from the filing date. And it will affect your ability to, to qualify for credit throughout that time. Um, one of the things I, I am often asked myself from people is, if I declare bankruptcy, how soon can I get credit? Um, and you know, I, I caution them that that's not why you should be declaring bankruptcy. If your goal is to get credit as fast as possible, you're probably making the same mistakes over again. Um, you know, I've talked to people who've been able to qualify for credit in just a matter of a few months, but when you ask them what kind of credit are you quali qualifying for, it's not the kind of credit you would want. It's very high interest rate, very high fees, you know, the kinds of things that you really don't want to have uh, uh, in your credit history or have to repay. You end up right in this, back in the same place. So um, be aware that qualifying for good credit terms is going to be probably years away. Um, but you know, if, if things are a situation where you just, you have no other choice, bankruptcy can be the right thing to do and helps you get back on your feet again and start making the good decisions and, and good choices going forward. So, um, be, be aware, can stay on your report for up to 10 years and it can hurt your ability to get credit through that entire time frame. Thank you, Rod. We're now moving over to our last section of our chat, which is the final five, where we get to ask our guests five final questions questions that are totally random, Beverly, I have nothing to do with credit, but just to get to know you a little bit better. And uh, so the first question I have for you, Beverly, is um, I know you, I know from watching Twitter and, and following your tweets that you're a fan of the, of the Braves baseball team. I am, yes. And I'm, I am. I'm, tell, me, tell me about your, your, your love for the Braves, and then I'm curious, do you have a baseball team that you don't like? <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Uh, you know, I am not going to tell you what team I don't like because I will lose some breeders. If I <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you why I love the Braves. Uh, when I was uh, a little girl, sitting next to my dad watching baseball games, and he taught me the game. So for me, it's just there's a lot of family history. There's an emotional tie to that. And Braves in particular, uh, I'm actually an Atlanta native. So there's, I think, maybe five of us here. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's my team. I love baseball. And when my son played travel baseball, um, I loved that. I mean, we, it was a lot of work, but yeah, we all just love baseball here. It's a, it's a lot of fun, and it brings on memories back for me. That's awesome. I, I grew up uh, I grew up in uh, Southern California and pretty close to Anaheim Stadium, so I grew up being an Angels fan. Mm -hmm. and, um, oh, yeah. and And so it was, we were kind of divided here because we had some – I was – I was with a group that was Angels fans and had a bunch of group of friends that were Dodgers yeah. fans. And so there was a little rivalry between them. Uh, Dodgers, LA Dodgers. Oh, Dodgers. So there's yeah. always a little yeah. rivalry yeah. between oh, the man. Angels and the Dodgers. <laughs> uh, Rod, do you, have, do you have a favorite baseball team, Rod? Um, Kansas City Royals. Uh, kind of like Beverly. I grew up 
in the Kansas City area, and one of my favorite memories is we used to camp uh, practically all summer long, and I can remember sitting with my dad and my grandpa with a little transistor radio listening to the Royals game and in front of the campfire. Um, and grew up with them. First major league ball game I went to was Kansas City. So uh, oh. still remember that to this day. They played the Minnesota Twins. Rod Carew was playing for the Minnesota Twins. Um, you know, but we had George Brett and um, you know, all those guys. So uh, yeah, Kansas City Royals fan. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, oh, they were great. They're doing great now. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they have their yeah. their times. <laughs> Um, second, second question, Beverly, is about coffee, and I'm curious about your favorite uh, coffee shop and what you like to get there. Uh, coffee, my favorite type of coffee. Um, okay, well, I grind my own beans, so I go to either Starbucks or um, Sprouts has this huge coffee aisle where I can get beans from all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like that too. I like Pike Place coffee from Starbucks, but when I go to Sprouts and I can get any kind I want, I love their coffee from Guatemala. Mm. Uh, I've been I go to Central America for a phase lately with my coffee. Uh, but I, I prefer to just grind it myself at home. Uh, I'll occasionally get a latte. I don't like it as much as I used to uh, because uh, in the last couple of years, I've just gotten into the fresh beans. I go into this that when we uh, go to Florida for vacation in the summer, my coffee grinder and my French press come with me. That's how big a deal it is. <laughs> nice. I love it, Beverly. Wow. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I bring a French press when I go camping. Oh, that's cool! All right, yeah, we're, we're right I because coffee. I love coffee, and we go camping quite a bit. And um, I was doing the, the instant coffee like Folgers for a really long time. Yeah, and I got to a point where I was like, uh, I, you know, I, we go on like three day camping trips, Rod and Beverly, and, and like the third day, I'm uh, like, I need some good coffee, and so I finally uh, like, I need. A French press. Why don't I just get a French press? So I bring one out when I camp now. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I can take it with me. I went to, I had to travel to New York a couple of weeks ago, and I was trying to figure out how I could bring my French press. I decided I can't figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> that did not work out for me. <laughs> I might have gotten my bag first. I just that whole thing. So. <laughs> uh, Rod, uh, you, I'm curious about your favorite coffee. I'm lucky I know what a French press is. I'm kind of amazed <laughs> that I know what a French press is. Um, Folgers probably would be right there at the top. Um, yeah, when I drink coffee, um, it's it's usually something like a caramel macchiato that really isn't coffee. It's more like a, a milkshake with some coffee flavoring in it. So uh, I'm sort of a cold caffeine drinker. I'm a Diet Dr. Pepper guy. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So... Uh, a third question, um, Beverly, is bagel or donut? Uh, you know, much bagel because the healthier, but no donut. I would love a donut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love donuts too. With coffee with mm -hmm. a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh yeah, my we, have, we almost have a ritual now. Like every week, I take my kids to the donut shop, and my son always gets the, the oh. chocolate bar. Yeah, <laughs> that's like one of my favorite ones. Mm. Rod, what do you like? I'm a, a. You have to ask. I'm a donut guy. I like <laughs> Beverly. I should say bagel because it's healthier. But I'm a you know, donut through and through. <laughs> That's kind of the ones with the. Uh, um, I call it Bavarian cream. It's the oh, pudding yeah, in yeah. the middle. Oh. Ah, yeah. I like blueberry um, donuts. Yeah, I like those too. I like just about any donut. Yeah, I like the holes too. Actually, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, question number four is, um, Beverly, you're reviewing and, and reading about credit cards all the time, and I'm just curious, at the moment, do you is there one credit card that stands out to you that you like? Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really a hard <laughs> <laughs> <Tinta>. <laughs> Yeah, I, And this isn't, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, an endorsement of the card, right. I can say this right now, but I do like... Uh, Barclay uh, card, um, the arrival card. That's a that's a really good one with some good rewards. And I've always been a fan of the Chase Sapphire preferred card. Okay, wonderful. And then the last quest question, uh, Beverly, is 
you know, you're writing all the time, you're writing blog articles, you're writing for different publications, and you're writing books. And I'm curious, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you inspired to be writing? Uh, you know, that's the easiest question you've asked me. <laughs> I, I've had people stay out of trouble with credit cards and either get out or stay out of debt. And, uh, you know, because I was young, when I'd gotten out of college, and it really messed up life for several years. And uh, so now my passion is to help people avoid that, avoid those mistakes. Well, Beverly, thank you so much for being our guest today. It's, it's awesome. I apologize for the technical difficulties, but I'm really excited that we got oh, you yeah. on the phone and we're able to have this conversation. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to let everyone know that if you'd like to learn more about Beverly, I'd like to get links to her social profiles as, as well as to beverlyharzug.com. Go to our Experian blog, and we have a, a page set up just for this conversation. And the URL is ex.pn slash debt dash escape and that'll provide you a link over to her latest book as well as links to her website and articles that Beverly has written. Also want to let you know that we have this credit chat on Twitter and YouTube every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. If you'd like to see past chats, would like to see past videos, podcasts, slide share decks and infographics, you can go to experience.com slash credit chat. I want to let you know that next week we'll be talking about vacation and summer vacations and how to have a fun and frugal uh, summer. So join us for next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And as always, we love to hear from our community. So if you have suggestions for topics or guests that you'd like to have in our chat, please tweet us. Our Twitter handle is at Experian underscore US, or just do a search on Twitter for Experian, and you'll find our Twitter handle there. We would love to hear from you. And um, finally, if you enjoyed this video, we encourage you to subscribe to our Experian YouTube page. And there's a big button on the screen. Uh, encourage you to click on it to subscribe so you, can, uh, so you won't miss uh, future broadcasts. I want to thank Beverly and Rod for, for joining us today. And uh, we'll talk and tweet with you all next week.